the fall sales have started in all the stores and I can't wait to decorate for fall. But the fall entry mats are always lame. They're always a little bit boring. So I'm gonna show you how to make a jazzy one. The very first thing I wanna do is I wanna make this mat not be normal, boring brown mat. So I wanna make it a color. So we're gonna make it a mix of number nine and number 56 in our colors. And then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that. So we're gonna take my dome brush. Normally we offload quite a bit when we use the dome brushes, but today I'm just going to be giving it a little wipe. And then I'm gonna start methodically on one side and work my way to the other. I've tried it with a roller. The roller didn't work for me. It made too big of deposits on there. And I tried it with a few other tools and this seems like the best, most even technique. So you just make sure you keep your blobs near each other, like work from the main little blob and then just work your way out so you get nice even coverage. And if you need to go back, move your brush back and forth, whichever way, you can do that too to get down in there. Don't worry about saturating all the way in. This is a very dense mat. These mats come from Ikea. They're very affordable. They're super durable. Um, if, I'm gonna show you a technique at the end that will show you how to refresh your mat so it doesn't wear off too quickly. So um, that will be super helpful. I thought about spray painting this and I've got two thoughts on the spray paint. You could easily go grab a can of spray paint, spray the whole thing and that would be fine. Do a misty spray, do a couple of coats so that you don't make those lumps. So if I was making an everyday mat that I wanted to last for like every day, I probably wouldn't use the spray paint at all because it will wear faster. But since this is an $11 mat and it's, you know, Ikea, it's an import and it's a seasonal mat, it's going to be in front of your front door for like two months and then it's if it doesn't survive that and the paint wears off, you can repaint it. And because stencils are reusable, you can re-put your stencil right back on there for next year and refresh the mat. There's some thoughts with that. So take that whichever way you want. I like the idea of the paint being pushed in, but you know, that's, that's my opinion, but those are my other thoughts. All right, you guys, I forgot that I found this amazing blue diamond brush at a conference I went to recently. So I tested it out on here and it's so much faster than the little brush. So you just load, it's gotta be a dry brush. This is domed just like our dome brushes and you have to wipe it off or you get big, um, like it crusts like that. So I need a new paper towel. So you want it to look a little bit more airy. And then you just go on here and it covers way faster. So now I've got the whole thing done and it's actually drying really quickly. I didn't know what to expect for basing the whole thing. Now you get back, squint your eyes at your project and make sure that you have even coverage. If you see anything that you don't like, then you just go back in and touch it up. Next, we are going to take this outside and I am going to spray it with Krylon 1311 matte finish. Um, this is an amazing um, can of finish. We have an uh, affiliate link down below in the description. And I'm going to spray it a couple of times this way, a couple of times this way. I'm doing that to protect the orange paint, but I'm also doing that because when I did burlap, it prevented any of these loose scraggly things from popping up. So it's going to seal. It's gonna make my surface harder and not so um, fibery. And um, I think that's gonna be a win. -win. I've got it sprayed with two coats and it is not wiggly. And when you start with this, it's a little bit kind of shifty. So this has stiffened everything up really well. So that is great. That means our stencil is gonna be easier to apply. So we're gonna take our stencil and we are going to put a piece of nano tape, and we will put a link down below for nano tape, we're going to put a little square of nano tape in each corner. And if you needed it, you could put it in any place in which you needed stability. So say you had a long skinny line somewhere on a stencil, you could use your nano tape. It's repositionable and it's um, removable. Um, I use this in our travel trailer for keeping things steady and sturdy. And we did a test on the mat and it works really, really well. It's double sided. So you can put it down and then peel off the other side 
And then that's the part that I'm terrible at, but hopefully since it's adhered to something stiff. So that just peels right off. And if you wanted to, you could save these just to kind of mask them when you're positioning things. I think I might actually do that. The little hairs on the mat will get onto your um, sticky stuff so when we're positioning and measuring. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put them off center so I can rip them off like a Band-Aid. Now we flip it over and now we bring in the T-square. T-square is very important. Um, it gives you a nice flat edge and it gives you a good right angle. So you're going to center it eyeball -y and be like, I think that might be about correct. And then you're gonna take a measurement. You just hook it up on one side. So I'm at seven and a bit on the centimeters. Seven and a half, so we drop that side down. And I'm at six and a bit, so we're gonna go closer to seven. So this is gonna be a dance. You're literally gonna dance around with this until you like where you have it. Okay, now we go from this side to this side. And centimeter-wise, I like the centimeters because I can tell what those are. 15 and a half, 15 and a half, and 13 and a half. Whew. All right, so um, I sometimes can be the world's worst measurer. Okay, we're gonna take the little peely tapes off and we're going to stick them down nice and firm. I had one of them pre-stuck, that's that guy. I think he might've been feeding me some fits there because he was sticking as I was moving. And you can save those little tapes. Oop. Big buckle. But feel how good that, listen to how good that's stuck. That's like satisfying. The dome brush is what's gonna keep you from bleeding under, so make sure that you have dome brushes. The flat ones just push the paint under domes keep everything kind of contained. Notice how that's not um, mushing. I'm, I'm pushing on my hand pretty darn hard and it's not splaying out under. That's why dome brushes are the best. So we're gonna use a offloading paper towel. I'm gonna pick up number 79 in our cream color and we are going to offload just a little bit because we're on this really big texture. And we'll start at the top and then we'll just stipple our way. We'll do a couple of coats. One good tip, I am making sure to tap on the edge of my plastic and not in the middle so that I get that really crisp line. And then I'll meet in the middle if I have a big space, a big letter. Don't try to get there all at once. All at once is what will make you bleed under. All at once is what will make a mess. So make sure that you just get there with layers. Stencils is a layers game. All right, so this is where we're at. Let's go take a peek. It's always good to be a peeker. Um, so we wanna make sure that we like the direction that we're going and we do, but it's very faint. So we have to do more coats. Okay, so let's take a look. This is layer two. It's looking pretty good. Look how crisp those lines are. Like you can't do this any other way than with a stencil. So this is amazing. Okay, layer number three. There we go, let's take a peek. Looks so good instead of moving forward with these letters because I've got three coats real quick on top of them, I'm gonna go ahead and move into my bands of checks. I've taped off the buffalo part of the buffalo check and I'm just going to tuck that into both corners and get a little piece of nano tape for each of the areas. 
All right, and now we pick up with the same cream color and we fill in our squares. Time to take a peeky poo. Let's see what we got. So, I think we're gonna stop probably right there. And now I just need to catch up with myself on my checks. And I'm gonna do a band here and a band here. It's all gonna be repeat. So, um, I also did cut off the extra of my big stencil so that I didn't make a mess when this was laying all over and make little cream colored marks everywhere. So, I'm just gonna move along move along and we'll be back with you. All right, guys, I am done. Um, it actually, the big squares went way faster than I thought they would go. Um, they really only needed one or two coats. These are smaller openings, so the brush doesn't have as much contact with the, the fibers. So that just took the four coats. Remember that when you're finished, you're gonna spray it with a couple of coats of the matte finish, this way and this way, this way and this way. That way it has a little bit of protection against the elements. Ready, I'm gonna peel it back and we're gonna take a look and see. By the way, the nano tape worked brilliantly. Look at how beautiful that is. And now it's fall. All right guys, I hope that you found this content amazing because this is so different than anything that you'll see on YouTube or pretty much anywhere else. So make sure that you subscribe, ring the bell, and we'll see you next time.